Good afternoon. The Committees on Water and Land and the Committee on Transportation and Culture and Arts is going into its Tuesday's agenda at 3 o'clock. We welcome all of you here this afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> this meeting, just for another session as well, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find the links to viewing options on the legislature's website. Uh, for our Zoom participants, the testifier audio is muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify, and your time limit is a minute as well. And if you do not have additional testimony that is different from your written testimony, we ask that you stand on your written testimony. Time permitting, we'll go into decision making after we hear from all of the testifiers. Okay. Uh, members, we are proceeding with SB 468. This is relating to aquatic nuisance species. It authorizes the Department of Land and Natural Resources to adopt rules to prevent and respond to the introduction of aquatic nuisance species from discharges incidental to the normal operation of a vessel and reflect the relationship between the Federal Vessel Incidental Discharge Act of 2018 as amended and the state law. Okay. DLNR, good afternoon. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee, Brian Nielsen, DLNR, Division of Aquatic Resources, uh, the department stands on its written testimony in support of the bill and we're available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Coordinated group on alien pest species, Christy or Andrew. Okay, Christy, thank you. Well, hello, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committees. My name is Christy Martin with CGAPS and I'm here to testify in strong support of this measure. Uh, the reason that the Division of Aquatic Resources needs these authorities is that in the Vessel Incidental Discharge Act, there are discharges that are not currently under their authorities. One of them, for example, is the sediments associated with anchors or anchor chain lockers. And this has been shown to potentially be able to carry a disease called stony coral tissue loss disease that's present in the Caribbean. It can carry it across the Pacific and end up in our waters. It's important that DAR has the authorities to regulate all of these discharges that can carry this disease. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Hover users group or hugs. Send testimony in opposition. Luke Watkins also oppose this measure. Uh, anyone else here wishes to speak to SB 468? Hearing none, uh, and seeing none, let's proceed to SB 1263, and this is relating to commercial ocean uh, recreation, and it requires the commercial ocean operators who take customers into state waters to engage in recreational activities to have at least one individual aboard the vessel who is rescue, diver, or lifeguard certified. Dylan Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Our department stands on its written testimony in opposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zachary Laprade or Laprade? Okay. In thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'll be testifying on behalf of the Ocean Tourism Coalition as well as individually on behalf of uh, Clips for Carters. We are speaking in opposition to this bill and joining DLNR in opposing this bill. Uh, the primary purpose of the opposition is that many of the vessels covered by this bill are already covered and um, monitored by the United States Coast Guard as certified vessels. And I am available for any other questions if you have them. Thank you. Jerry Isham, they in support. Keller Lewis. Good morning, or good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've been here since morning. Uh, I'm testifying in strong support of Senate Bill 1263 because I believe it will increase the safety for the people on boats. The State uh, Department uh, of Health uh, 
has a study, the snorkel safety study, which I think I've forwarded to all of you, finds that snorkeling is the most dangerous thing that people do when they visit Hawaii. And it's been said that the Coast Guard has jurisdiction over vessels, which is true, but the Coast Guard does not have any restrictions or any training required to supervise people in the water as they snorkel. There are man overboard drills, there are firefighting drills, there's random drug testing. Furthermore, I believe the state is incumbent upon the state to protect the passengers on these vessels. If you're serving food off of a boat, there has to be a food handler's card. If you're serving liquor off a boat, it has to be a blue card or a yellow card. So clearly the state recognizes the importance of responsibly preparing food, serving alcohol. I think they should also be responsible for making sure that people have a safe and uh, sustainable uh, adventure on the ocean when they're in Hawaii. And I'll be here to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Kelvin. Okay, Denver Kuhn. Sense communications in opposition. Uh, members, there's... Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, Jim Kuhn. Okay. I have Denver. He's, he's I... Oh, okay. Jim, are you there? I am. I am, are but they, they won't unhook me here. There I go. Uh, <laughs> You're speaking I, on behalf of Denver as well? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I will, unless he wants to chime in on his own here. He, he, I think he's logged in, I hope. In any event, I would like to, first of all, my name is Jim Kuhn. Uh, pardon me, Chair Inouye and, and Chair Lee uh, and Vice Chairs. Uh, I'm speaking for the for my company for Trilogy Excursions. But uh, I, I want to, first of all, counter the last testimony. Uh, I don't know what division he is on, but our Coast Guard here currently requests vessels to conduct snorkeler and distress drills and snorkel incident questionnaires. And so not only that, any time there is an emergency, the captain must so notify the Coast Guard, file a comprehensive report with the Coast Guard. They do a very thorough investigation and they're, I believe, very hands-on on, on this issue. And, and I would also like to point out that the safest place for a snorkeler to be is on one of our vessels, well-trained personnel. And it's true, snorkeling can be a very dangerous uh, hobby or, or pursuit uh, if you're not in good shape. And it's Jim, incumbent Jim. on them. Jim, your time is up, but are you in support or in no, opposition? I'm in opposition. I, okay. I would like to see an exclusion for for certified vessels. Thank, uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Aloha. Members, there's four Kuhn's here. Uh, Kuhn's here. Members, there is four support communications that came to the committee, as well as one uh, in uh, more in comments. Anyone here is, is wishes to speak to SB 1263. Okay. Uh, hearing none um, and seeing none, we'll proceed to SB 1191, and this is relating to trans-oriented development. Uh, this appropriates funds for statewide planning and coordination for transit-oriented development projects identified in the state strategic plan for Trend, transit oriented developments and we have DLNR. Okay, sense communication and support. Scott Glenn or OPSD. Uh, Harrison Roof from OPSD. We stand strong testimony. Okay, mahalo. Okay, Mark Glick. Or representative of the Energy Office. Chris Schumper, um, the White State Energy Office. We stand on our written testimony and support your request. Thanks, Chris. Okay, members, we do have uh, two in uh, support as well and one in opposition. Anyone else wishes to speak to SB 1191? Going once, going twice, we say aloha. Okay, <laughs> then this concludes the three bills, Chair, that we have with a joint. Um, <clears throat> let's go straight in. Yeah, we'll go straight in. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to decision making and we want to be right on time because we are busy people today. Otherwise, your bill's gonna die. Okay, so bear with us. Okay, members, for the first one, SB, 
468, and this is relating to the aquatic <clears throat> nuisance uh, species. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, Chair's uh, recommendation is to defer this measure uh, indefinitely. And you know, this issue has come up several times uh, in past sessions. And we understand that the federal law already covers uh, the incident discharges, additional state law rulemaking, and a double fine system is not necessary as well. So we'll defer this measure. Uh, SB 1268 I stand corrected. SB 1263, relating to commercial ocean recreations, and this um, measure as well, uh, we will defer. Um, we'll pass with the amendments, and we'll like to def defect the date to July 1st, 2050, as it continues to move on to the next committee for continued discussion. Okay. Any uh, discussions? So we're moving 1263 then? Uh, 1263, yes, we're going to defect the date. Okay, are you in support or not? No, I'm not, but a little WR. Okay. All right. Okay, any further discussions? Okay, for the um, uh, SB 1263, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. We'll defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay, any further discussions? Hearing none, Committee on Water and Land for the vote. Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1263 with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang is excused. Senator McKelvey. A reservations. Senator Favela is excused. Madam Chair, the measure passes with amendments. <coughs> Thank you. Committee on Water. Thank you. Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts recommendation is to pass uh, SB 1263 with amendments, noting excused absence of Senators uh, Keoho Kololei. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, share recommendations and update. No, sorry. Oh, sorry, wait. Uh, no no sorry. for Senator Awad. Okay. Thank you. For uh, SB 1291, and this is relating to the TOD developments, Chair's recommendation is that we pass with amendments. We'll blank the appropriation on page 2, line 14, and defect the date to July 1st, 2050, for further discussions. I'm sorry, 1191. Okay, SB 1191, pass with amendments. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1191 with amendments of the three members present from the Committee of Water and Land. Are there any no votes? Any votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, the measure passes with amendments. Thank you. Thank you for the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts. Same recommendation on SB 1191, pass with amendments, noting excused absence of Senator Keoho Kalole. Are there any reservations or no's? No. One no. Uh, no for Senator Wa, and the measure is adopted. Okay, thank you. This concludes the uh, joint hearing on the Committee on Water and Land and the Transportation and Culture and the Arts. Yeah. Good afternoon, the committees on water and land, the Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts, and the Committee on Government Operations. It's going on to its hearing notice at 3.01 p.m. in room 224. Okay. And again, uh, we will note that uh, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find the links to viewing options on the legislature's website. And for those on Zoom, uh, on Zoom land, uh, we'll say that your audio is muted uh, and the video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify for one minute. Time permitting, we'll go into decision making after we hear from all the testifiers. Okay, members, we are ready to go into SB 1535, and this is relating to transportation. It allows the Director of Transportation to exempt certain ground transportation facility projects 
from Historic Preservation Review, the Environmental Impact Statement Law, and the Hawaii Public Procurement Code under certain conditions. The LNR. Madam Chair, Chair, the Okay, thank you, Doc. Next up, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, representing Scott Glenn. Yes, uh, hello, Chair, members. I'm Tom Eisen with OPSD's Environmental Review Program, formerly known as OEQC for many, many years. I stand on our submitted comments, but would like to emphasize that the process currently provides for agencies to exempt various activities from the erstwhile requirement to prepare an environmental assessment. Thank you. And members, if there's any questions for those testifiers that come up, please feel free to ask the questions then. It's okay with the chairs. Um, State Procurement Office. Aloha. Aloha. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. Monica Hakui, the State Procurement Office, stands on its written uh, comments and oppositions to this bill are free to take any questions. Thank you. Okay. We're only, excuse me, we're, we're only opposing the 103D exemption. Well, that's because the, the project shall not be in excess <laughs> then for the amount. Is that right? Well, they're basically asking to be exempt from the procurement code yeah. for anything under 100,000. Yes. yes. Okay. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> DOT, or representative of the Department of Transportation. You're a pretty Ed Sniffin. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Oh my goodness. Okay. Thank, Thank you for chairs. being here. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. The Department of Transportation, let me introduce myself. I'm Tammy Lee, Acting Deputy Director for the DOT. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in support with comments, and I'm here for any questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chair Hawaii, representing. Um, Todd Bollinger, okay, sends communication in support. Testifying for ACECH on Zoom. Yes, Chair, it's Sandy Wong. Uh, let me see if I can turn on my video. Oh, here we go. Sandy, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, fine. Okay. So, Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee, Sandy Wong, on behalf of the American Council of Engineering Companies, Hawaii. Uh, we are in opposition to this bill. Uh, let's be clear, um, the engineers are all for life safety, and that's why we are opposing this bill. Um, if the procurement was exempt from 103D, that means that design professionals would not be procured based on qualification-based selection, and qualification-based selection ensures that the most qualified engineer does the work. Uh, you know, we're really going down a slippery slope here. You know, when I read the testimony in the bill, it says um, 100,000, but I see that some of the supporters are actually saying, oh, let's go to 250 or 500,000. So we're really, we're really going down the slippery slope. Uh, finally, I wanted to say, when I spoke to my engineers, they said the delay is not in procurement. The selection process isn't the delay. The selection process is getting the contracts out of DOT. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Members, we have um, four, let's see, seven others in support of the measure. Anyone here present who wishes to speak to SB 1535? I have a question for DOT. Uh, and the question is, what's the extent of um, DOT uh, projects that would be exempted from the review if this bill were to pass? Um, so the suggested uh, proposed language in the measure, it has conditions and basically uh, exempting uh, 6E. Um, Can you move the mic sure. down? Um, sure. Okay. Exempting, so any excavation that is greater, greater than 24 inches, um, and that's because I think anything um, that is greater has already been kind of like 
the ground has already been previously disturbed. Um, and so that's one of the conditions. Um, for chapter 343, um, basically, I guess, sorry, um, for 103D, um, what we're saying is, you know, we're going to follow the qualifications uh, procurement of 103D 304 um, because it is above the small purchase threshold. So we would do a call for qualifications um, because we say that, you know, over 100,000 but less than 250,000. Um, we say um, not to exceed 5 million, and that's because um, if you need to kind of like expand the roadway construction, it might cost. A, you know, relatively high amount. Okay, so it's specifically bike lanes. We feel it's bike lanes and also pedestrian access. Okay, so um, have we experienced in highways, DOT, have we done any bike lanes? Not on our freeways. So have we done many of projects for bike lanes? Because most of it are on county, city and counties roadways, yeah? I know our statute allows us to do so, but I will have to check with our oh, okay. design branch and our okay, the, planning branch. Yeah. The reason I ask with regards to three, uh, 103D is at, at times when you do a project, you want to continue. So, you know, if it doesn't, if we, we're below the threshold, then that means that you will have to if you want to extend a long bikeway, which actually we should here on Oahu because we have a lot, many short bike lanes. And so if you want to continue, then you would have to stop because of 103D. Is that correct? Procurement? Just asking. Come on, Bonnie. Yeah, come on out. <laughs> I noticed in the case of city and county when they do the bike lanes, um, well, maybe they're not obligated to 103D. They are. They do, right? Yes. Okay. So at times that when you want to make sure that bike lanes are on a continued path and do the construction fast, but then because of the, you know, that particular threshold, then project have to stop. And that's one of our concerns that this will encourage parceling. So you're under 100,000 or whatever the amount will be, and then you then you'll do that part and then you'll decide, okay, I need another section with, due to be under the threshold and that'll be, uh, you can do that part and then do another section. By the time at you get done, time. And it, sometimes it's simultaneous or right after the other one ends. And so our concern is if they had done it as an IFB, for it, perhaps under 103D 302, they could have done the whole project under one construction job as opposed to cutting it up into three and using the small purchase threshold in each of those sections. Okay. Any questions for yes, Senator Alafanti? Yes. And following up to the line of questioning from Chair Inouye, what specific projects does DOT have now that could be used if this bill were to pass or any future potential projects that it could impact? Senator, my apologies. I have to get back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we can talk future, yeah. I guess. Thank you. Any just, further questions? Senator just one. Lee. Um, <clears throat> Speaking to this, uh, looking at the Department of Transportation Services testimony on this in support, it's my understanding that in situations where people are, you know, particularly pedestrians crossing <coughs> streets are getting killed um, around the state, they're able to go in at the county level sometimes, and at the state level, but mostly at the county level, to put in, you know, flashing um, beacons that people can press to make sure that folks can be visible when they're crossing. Those, uh, I'm told, come in the neighborhood of somewhere between like twenty to forty thousand dollars, roughly in order to put those in, but they could do that like literally overnight in those situations where there's you know, clear safety risk um, were it not for having to go through you know, a number of the hoops. Um, is that something that for DOT side, you guys have, well, I guess you guys don't really put those in yet uh, very often. Would this help facilitate that, I guess is what I'm asking? My apologies again, Senator. I have to get back to you. I have to talk to our traffic branch as sure, well as sure. our motor vehicle. And then safety I guess office. lastly, um, I'll just close out with I think part of the intention of the bill, uh, I mean, some of the highway projects that have been done more recently, DOT has uh, chosen not to um, address the full length of, of Vision Zero complete streets, other safety adding in sidewalks or, or safe bike lanes because it would mean adding in two or three feet 
to the existing travel way, which would trigger a whole bunch of the 343, um, depending on the funding NEPA and all kinds of other stuff, which potentially this would help expedite so we wouldn't wait five to seven years before another person um, has a safe way to get through if it's kids going to school along the side of a highway, like in Waimanalo, for example, or other places. Is that the case? Well, I mean, I think anytime uh, 343 is triggered, I know that, you know, you have to do an environmental document. So I, I would think that it would take either an EA or EIS, I don't know, depending on the scope of the project. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Quick, 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 quick. Senator McKelvey. Uh, real quickly, to the point that was made by Sandy Wong. Sandy Wong. The point by Sandy Wong um, that procurement isn't the issue. It's not the holdup, and there are expedited procedures for smaller amounts that exist. E EPRO, for instance, for a certain threshold, and then trying to find three, three suitable vendors. And we actually have other bills moving forward. We're going to hear supposedly now in the next room <laughs> that deals with this insofar as the three selection. But to her point, I mean, out of all of the issues that are raised by my co-chairs, you know, insofar as these complete streets programs, procure is procurement really the big one of the big holdups? Or to the point of SPO, is it really not? And it's kind of like being seen as, okay, we'll just do away with procurement, we'll allow parceling, we'll allow no competition, competitive bids to occur because that's holding up when it's these other 343 EA things that are doing it. Well, I think for, for us, like I said, uh, HRS 304, if we're doing any kind of design, we're required to use that type of procurement. Um, I think the threshold under 100,000, that's the small purchase for services. Um, so I, I can't imagine that, that those types of contracts are, you know, take a while. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the construction part of it. Um, you know, I think putting out an invitation for bid with um, specifications, I, I can't imagine that it would take that long. Yeah, exactly. That's what Bonnie was saying. Yeah. So I think we're getting caught up in the net here of the bill insofar as SBO goes in procurement. But thank you, Tammy and, and coaches. I appreciate you allowing me the line of questioning. Okay. Any further discussions? Okay. Uh, hearing none. Okay. We'll go into decision making on this triple hearing. <laughs> the triple committee on water and land uh, transportation and culture and arts and the committee on government operations is going into decision making on SB 1535 uh, and members chair's recommendation uh, is to pass with these amendments we're going to adopt DLNR's recommended amendments that the historic review exemption that only applies within areas previously disturbed and only to the depth of the known soil disturbance not to exceed 24 inches below grade and that any exemption not apply on historic districts and areas with a high probability for the presence of archaeological sites or burial sites will also defect the date to July 1st, 2050 for continued discussions. We're also going to adopt the State Procurement Office's recommendation that's to remove the um, 103D HRS exemption. Okay? Having said that, any discussions? Hearing? Sure. Yes, Senator uh, Alafanti. Yeah, I'll be. I appreciate the amendments, but I'll be voting with reservations. Um, I'd like to see if there's a list of potential projects that this bill would impact. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And DOT, make sure that we have a list forthcoming to the committees. Mahalo. Okay, uh, for the committee on water and land, chair's recommendation to pass SB 1535 with amendments. Okay, any discussions? Okay, hearing none for the committee on water and land. Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1535 with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye with reservation. Senator Chang is excused. Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Favela is excused. Madam Chair, the measure passes with amendments. Thank you for the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts. Uh, same recommendation on SB 1535 to pass with amendments, uh, noting excused absence of Senator Kiyoho Kololei. 
Are there any, and noting uh, reservations for Senator Elefante, uh, any other reservations or no's? No. No for Senator Awa. The recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. Committee on Government Operations, same recommendation as Water and Land, Senate Draft 1. Uh, the chair votes yes. Vice Chair Gabbard is excused. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. I vote yes. Senator Awa? No. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you very much, members. Okay, thank you, folks. Uh, this concludes the triple hearing. Which one? Thank you. We're convening the Joint Committees on Transportation and Culture and the Arts and Committee on Government Operations on our 3.05 p.m. agenda here in State Capitol Conference from 224 on SB 119 relating to the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Um, I'll note we have a ton of testimony on this measure. Um, so we'd like to make sure to remind everybody that you submit your written testimony to the committees. Um, we'd also like to note that because we have the written testimony of everybody who has uh, dutifully submitted their testimony, if we could um, ask for brevity. We do have a one-minute timer, uh, but to the extent that folks are willing to stand on their testimony, we understand, I think, um, uh, a lot of the testimony is going to be um, pretty identical. Uh, so if you could maybe add something, uh, just not repeat. Uh, so with that, why don't we go into the uh, first um, or the only bill, SB 119, Lang State Foundation Culture and the Arts, and hopefully we can get to every testifier. Um, testifying first is the Attorney General. Are with us? Oh, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. We have submitted our written comments and are available to respond to your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Chairs Lee McKelvey, it's Karen Ewald. I am the Interim Executive Director for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, and I stand on my written testimony. Thank you. Uh, up next is, and that's in position, Department of Budget and Finance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, Sabrina Nasser, Deputy Director for Department of Budget and Finance, and we stand on our written testimony in opposition. Thank you. Up next is Dance Space Hawaii in opposition. Uh, Winward Arts Guild in opposition, Rachel Orr Art in opposition, Ebb and Flow Arts in support. Um, we have, let me go straight to the folks who are here with us, uh, as opposed to be testifying. Um, Aisha Carter on Zoom. on Zoom. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, we can hear you. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Ishia Carter. I am a teaching artist on the State Foundation of Culture and the Arts teaching roster. I am testifying today after conducting classes here at Waihei Elementary School on the island of Maui through the artists, uh, Art and Public Places program. I am opposition to HB 119 on behalf of myself and the thousands of students that I've taught over the years on Maui, Molokai, Lanai, and Kauai. These programs support, supported by the art and public places and the artists in the schools programs are the only access to the arts for most of the students I've taught. Through the arts, these students are engaging in the creative process that pulls together the core subjects that students are learning. These programs give students a way to engage in the process of learning and collaboration that our Hawaii students greatly need, especially with the learning loss and suffering of social skill development during the pandemic. Um, this bill would be extremely detrimental to all of those students who could benefit from these programs. I'm staunch, staunchly in opposition of this bill, and we should be funding these programs more, not less. Thank you. Up next is Carrie Valentine. Good afternoon. Vice Chairs, uh, 
My name is Perry Valentine. I am uh, also part of the Artists in the Schools program for many, many years, uh, doing this on the islands of Kauai and Molokai. And I stand in my position. Uh, also, it you know, just in essence just doesn't make sense to take all these re resources that give to so many thousands of students along the islands. They're, some of them, their only art opportunity to um, go to some record and archive footage um, that doesn't even state what kind of in states that um, it won't be available for the general public. So to me, you know, please in humbly say the bill doesn't make sense. To serve the humanity and community of Hawaii. Mahalo, and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you very much. Up next is Paul James Brown. Good afternoon. Aloha. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I'm opposed to this bill. Um, the criteria for determining performing arts is so broad as to be impossible to select, administer, and evaluate. Will the state determine whether a performance belongs in the state museum by visiting every performance in the state? Does it intend to send a committee to every performance in the state to determine whether it should be included in the state's collection? When you record a performance, you have to have permission from the, the rights holders. Most performances are archival and they're shot from the back of the house rather than a performance. You, you do not get the sense of a performance when you look at a archival shot. You have to, in order to get the sense of a performance, you have to do a special performance video with new crew who are in addition to the crews that you would have. This is a very, very badly um, uh, drafted bill, and you should dump this bill into the ocean as soon as possible and forget <laughs> it. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, up next is Carrie Powens here. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, in person testimony, Sean Brown. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, committee chair, vice chair, and committee members. I stand on my written. You need to speak into the mic. Thank you. I stand on my written testimony in opposing this bill, and I agree with that person. It should go into the drink. Can you say? Can you say your name again for the record? Sean Brown. I'm an artist and educator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, um, for in-person uh, testimony, we have uh, Dave Moss. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dave Boss, President and CEO of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. Stand by the testimony submitted already and uh, very much in support of this bill and support for the performing arts through State Foundation. Thank you. Here for any questions. Thank you. Uh, that is all the in-person testimony that's been submitted. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to testify? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, somehow our, our testimony, <clears throat> testimony that accepts submitted, but we provide comments and we'll get it submitted to you. Thank you. Next. Oh, you cannot come up without your ukulele. Oh. No, no, just joking, just joking. <laughs> uh, Good afternoon. I'm really nervous. <laughs> no. um, uh, aloha, Chair Lee and Vice Chair Inoue and members of the, of the committee. Um, I'm a local musician born and raised here in Hawaii and uh, I think everything that needed to be said had, has been your said. And, oh, I'm sorry, my name is Jake Shumabukuro. Um, and um, uh, I, I do stand by my uh, testimony in, in opposition of this bill, and I hope that together, you know, we can find another solution. And especially after the last few years, you know, I think we need the arts more than ever, you know, to bring the community together. I've seen firsthand what music and the arts do, you know, to just make such a positive impact on the community and especially the children. You know, I, I get to work, I have the opportunity to work with a lot of kids and I see what it does and what it does for their self-esteem, what it does for just inspiring them and getting them fired up, you know, to be passionate, find their passion for whatever it is, you know, even if it's not arts related. So I don't want to take up any more time, but you know, but I, I do stand by my, um, by my testimony. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, please come forward. Good afternoon. Patricia Steinhoff, representing the Hawaii Handweavers Hui. Um, honorable committee members, thank you very much. Um, the Hawaii Handweavers Hui is very much in opposition to um, Senate Bill 1119. 
um, because it will reduce the amount of funding that's available for small arts organizations and for working artists in Hawaii. I would point out to you that when you are sitting in your Senate chambers in this building, you are looking up at a tapestry made by one of our former members, Ruth Adele Anderson and a team of weavers. And I hope when you look at that, you will think about the handiwork that went into it and we'll try to support more of our weavers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here in the room with us wishing to testify in this measure? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senators. Uh, thank you for, um, I'm Sean Chu. I'm a theater artist and advocate. Thank you for your work on this bill. Um, I'm concerned about um, the copyright thing, uh, the measure about that. Um, I think uh, common practice is licensing artists um, when you do record things. And um, while I'm, I am a performing artist, and initially when I heard about this bill, I was like, oh, yay, money for artists like me. Um, when I went to the House Committee to hear the companion bill, I heard the uh, testimony and I learned a lot from people like Karen. And um, then I was like, how else can artists be supported who are not visual artists? And I feel like there's other th methods or ways to do that, that people who are more wise than me <laughs> can figure out. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure this afternoon? If not, are there questions? Question. Uh, all right. Question. Oh. Senator Wakai. Um, question for Mr. Nishiyama as well as Karen Ewall. Mr. Nishiyama, your objection to this bill is based on the tax exempt general obligation bonds, which have certain restrictions placed on them, correct? Yes, that's correct. So if these were non or, or taxable bonds, you wouldn't have any of these objections, correct? That's correct. Okay. I was under, I'm under the understanding that when the budget and finances floated an eight billion, uh, eight million, eight hundred million dollar bond, and sixty percent was tax exempt, forty percent was taxable bonds. So if we kept it only to taxable bonds. We wouldn't have all the objections you've outlined in your testimony, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you, uh, Karen. Um, I understand that about thirty percent of the artwork that you have is sitting in a storage. Is, is sitting in storage, is that correct? 23% actually, and it's uh, actually in rotation. So we need to have uh, works of art available as we rotate the over 7,000 works of art throughout the state, art throughout the state. Thank you, but as you purchase more and more art, more and more art is just sitting in, in storage and going through that rotation. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say sitting in storage, but um, there is art that is not on display currently, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further questions? All right, if not, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We're going to recess. I'm ready to roll. Okay. I'm ready to roll. Yes. Okay. Uh, are we in IT? Yes. Still? Yes, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, we're in decision making on Senate Bill 119 for the Committees on Transportation, Culture, and Arts and uh, Community and Government Operations. Chairs having conferred, we'd like to move the measure forward with some amendments, and we want to make this clear for everybody because I know everyone's taking their time to come down here this afternoon. Um, I don't think it's anyone's intention to deprive anyone of um, uh, opportunity to engage in the arts. We'd like to contribute to that. Um, so what we want to do is, because this is the first time we'll be engaging, I think, in performing arts uh, through the State Foundation, we'd like to set this up as a pilot project and add an additional uh, general fund appropriation to fund um, a series of grants and other things that the bill contemplates. Um, removing the portion of funding that would come out of the existing uh, funding for the arts. So this would be additive rather than uh, yeah. moving things around. And then finally set up a committee to oversee uh, the program 
uh, with recommendations uh, to be made, uh, learning from the experience, so that uh, in time uh, we can return and make something permanent happen. There's effective date. And with a with a defective date, yes. So any discussion on that? Oh yeah. How much we're going to put in? We're going to leave it blank for now. Okay. Uh, it's going to go to Wham. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see what they do. Okay. If not vice chair. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. We're also going to um, clarify. Uh, so in the recommendation, we're also going to clarify the copyright and simplify the definition of performing arts um, to arts or skills that are intended to be performed before an audience, including dance, singing, musical performances, and theater, which should address some of the concerns raised by, I think, some of the um, uh, stakeholders. Uh, also removing the definitions of display and works of art to address concerns about the various testifiers about what copyright law is as it pertains to this bill. And um, have SFCA run with the program and amend the preamble accordingly. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? Uh, yeah, 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 real oh, quick, just sorry. so I'm clear. Everybody that was opposed is good with this. Otherwise, you know, I typically go vote no, but if you made it all right, I'll vote yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. they're good with it. Because yeah. uh, we're uh, adding two, we're not taking away. So my other question is, are you going to put a recommended you amount You're going to speak on the conference? mic, Joy. Are you going to put a recommended amount in the conference report as to how much you would recommend that we for general funds? I think not yet. This is the first time we're contemplating a general fund appropriation, so we can, as this goes forward to next committees, we can kind of figure okay. out what makes sense. Yeah, that's why I'm figure out what we should submit. Okay, Vice Chair. For the Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 119 with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Okay, Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Alafanti. Aye. Okay, Senator Keoho Kaloli is excused. Senator Awa. Aye. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Government operations, same recommendation, SD1. Chair McKelvey? Aye. Vice Chair Gabbard's excuse, Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. I vote yes, Senator Awa? Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you, members. Appreciate it. See you in the next room. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>
Standing. Thank you very much. Next, State, State Council on Developmental Disabilities in support. Next up, Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support. Um, Peter Fritz in support. Peter, please. Um, are, you, are you standing on your written testimony? Uh, yes, I am in support of the intent, but I recommend that based upon past history where fines were not in the bill um, for parking and different rates have developed, that it would be better to include those fines in the bill, as well as to propose that any standard for parking, because this is a federal law, so the state has to incorporate the ADA standards into its own procedures, um, be promulgated in the same manner that DCAB promulgated um, administrative rules. So they developed administrative rules for the parking standards for the state to use for their enforcement. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have David Fukuzawa in support. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 384? Members, any questions? Okay, moving on. SB 465 relating to medical cannabis. First up, State Department of Transportation providing comments. I will stand on your testimony. Thank you very much. Next, Department of Health providing comments. We'll stand on our testimony. Thank you very much. Next, we have Attorney General providing comments on Zoom. Oh, no, you're not. You're in here in person. Good. I'll make it quick. Thank you. Andrew Goff, on behalf of the Attorney General, we do note in our testimony that uh, the current, uh, all inter island travel is uh, federal jurisdiction. Um, so we are concerned that this would be misinterpreted as um, allowing um, uh, patients to uh, travel inner island with cannabis. And also uh, the real concern is that it would uh, be miscon misconstrued to require um, airlines to allow cannabis travel. And currently the FAA has a pretty strict law enforcement policy um, that any airline could face losing its plane and any pilot could face losing their certificate. So we would we did include recommended language to We clarify. saw that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up we have um, Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii in support, Aloha Green Holdings Inc. in support. Tai Chang, are you on Zoom? Not okay. present, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Next, I see Cliff Otto on Zoom, Akamai Cannabis Consulting. And I we do have your written testimony about the 12 mile boundary. So um, use your time wisely, Mr. Dr. Otto. Yes, yes, I will, Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committees. Dr. Clifton Otto testifying on behalf of Akamai Cannabis Consulting. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony in support of this measure. Uh, you have a written testimony. I just wanted to emphasize that this bill is important, not only because it could help our patients and dispensaries, but because it could help answer a fundamental question. And that is, what are the jurisdictional limits of the state? The answer to this question could have significant implications for the inter-island and intrastate transport of cannabis in Hawaii. Uh, thank you for considering our proposed amendments and I will be available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have 10 other individuals in support, um, Cannabis Society of Hawaii in support, and one individual in, in opposition. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 465? Come on up. Um, you have one minute and please state your name and talk into the mic. My name is Thomas Milsarik. I uh, live on the North Shore. I've been surfing there for, since uh, 1976. Uh, I don't know the details of this bill, but I would just hope that there's a caution if it's passed that marijuana can be psychologically addicting. And if that caution is, if you are aware of that caution, and that would be a good thing. If you're not, I would hope you would become aware of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 465? I see Randy Gons. Um, please identify yourself. You have one minute. Aloha. My name is Randy Gons. I'm the director of the Hawaii Cannabis Industry Association. We'll make sure to get over test testimony for you all. Uh, but we are in support of this measure. We've been studying this issue for a few years now. Um, 
We work with our uh, sister organization, the National Cannabis Industry Association. They linked us up with other states that are successfully doing this without federal intervention. Um, you know, as we know, our, our program in general is a, a federal issue, and there haven't been any issues with states like Alaska. There is a CFR um, that FAA uses that says if a pilot is knowingly transferring the product, uh, or any illicit substance in the Scheduled Substances Act, then they are liable to it. But if they are not knowingly carrying that product, um, they, they have plausible deniability. So states like Alaska are doing this very successfully, and they have kind of given us our comments on that. We also um, have conferred with our attorney, uh, who is the former Attorney General, David Louie, who's provided some comments on that as well. So we'll make sure to get over that information to you all, and this is really important for patients. So thank you for taking it up. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 465? Questions, members? Seeing none, do we need to recess for decision making? Okay, Question, we're going to. Uh, Chair. Oh, sorry. What's the. Um, Chair, Chair Inouye, it needs. Yes, uh, just a question. question. What's the um, approval date we're looking at for this one? Upon I think approval? We're defect dating all of them. Oh, okay. To uh, ensure further discussion. No, the bill itself. When does it go into effect? We're defect dating it. Okay. Somehow, maybe Attorney General can. It's just a question of um, even though we, let's say we adopt. Andrew Goff, could you come on up? If we adopt um, your recommendation, the only concern I had is with regards to airports. Um, and why I asked about the date, um, Chair, is because. There's the regulations with regards to TSA. So, you know, the time that the bill passes and when it's approved, um, what's the alternatives to let everyone know that we're doing this so our patients don't get stuck at the airports. So that's the only thing that uh, maybe we can uh, include in the um, committee report or something. Your concerns. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of when it's pa when the bill passes, okay, when does it go into effect? Just to make sure that an alert goes out to all mm -hmm. those who travel with, um, you know, these prescriptions that, you know, everything is cool. So do we need to do that in the bill is, is something because we're working now with the feds. And so we're approving it statewide, but then they got stuck with TSA, so. Just, yeah. just something if we can allow uh, a process. Sure, that's something we can definitely uh, discuss, but it would be um, still federally illegal, so it's up to TSA to enforce their law. Uh, my suggestion is um, because it's going to go lateral to another committee, will you submit written testimony to regarding Chair Inouye's concerns as to that's whether, tiny. as to some kind of warning or timing uh, uh, yeah. on the effect of the statute. Yeah, okay. we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, okay, Senator Elefante. Yeah, quick question. Um, you're Mr. Goff, right? Yes. So if the committee were to accept your language, that would be fine with, with your office? Uh, I mean, we would still have concerns because it could be misconstrued as uh, allowing it when it is federally illegal. But um, I mean, there's already language in there that says travel is with the understanding that the mm -hmm. state law ends at the state borders. Um, so that's a uh, you know, chance that they would have to take. Uh, and as far as it would not require a private entity to uh, you know, break federal law, then I think my office would be okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Goff. Yeah. Okay, any other questions, Senators? Okay, um, we're gonna proceed with decision-making. I believe I provided my decision-making notes. For SB 101, Chair's recommendation is to pass with DCAB amendments and add a defect date to ensure that there's further discussion in the event that there's any other um, errors that we need to fix along the way. Any comments, questions, concerns? Um, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Yes, Senate Bill 101, recommendation of the chairs to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Sarah Moriwaki. Aye. Sarah Shimbukuro is excused. Sarah Awa. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> Transportation, Culture, and Arts, same recommendation. 
Okay, Chair's recommendation to pass SB 101 for the Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts is to pass with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator Kehu Kaloli is excused. Senator Owa. No. Okay, measure is adopted. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. For SB 384, Chair's recommendation is to pass with DCAB amendments and also defect date um, to ensure that all errors are fixed before the law becomes law. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, thank you very much. Senate Bill 384, SD1. Okay, if the members are present, any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you for the Committee on Transportation, Culture and Arts, same recommendation. Okay, Chair's recommendation on SB 384, Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts. I used to pass with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Okay, Senator Awa. Aye. Okay, Senator Kiyoho Kaloli is excused. Venture is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Case for SB 465, Chair's recommendation is to pass with the Attorney General's amendments and add a defect date to continue for the discussion. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, Senate Bill 465, uh, SD1. Uh, four members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you for the Committee on Transportation, Culture and Arts. Same recommendation. Okay, Chair's recommendation to pass SB 465 with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Okay, Senator Alba. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair, with Senator Kiyoho Kaloli and excused. Thank you. We are adjourned. The 310 calendar is adjourned. Thank you very much, folks. All right, good afternoon. We're reconvening the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts for decision making on our 3 p.m. agenda on SB 498 relating to fireworks, which was previously heard in this committee earlier. I um, want to thank uh, Co Chair um, Wakai on this, uh, as this was joined with PSM and Senator Elefante, uh, who had worked on some of the substance here. So we'd like to move this forward for further discussion, making uh, uh, some amendments. First, changing the appropriation to a $1 million general fund appropriation, ensuring that there's, secondly, no increase in fees. Uh, third, making sure that offsite inspections must be final uh, at the container drop, must be at the final container drop-off location and within 24 hours or in a non-active harbor area at the disc director's discretion to address um, uh, all the issues raised by some of the stakeholders. Um, contraband will be under the jurisdiction of law enforcement. And tampering with uh, a secure container seal um, would uh, result in fines of a uh, blank amount, which we'll leave blank for the moment as this goes on to uh, the Judiciary and Ways and Means Committees. And finally, we put on a defective date to ensure that we can have some further discussion on this. So any discussion? Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry. Okay. All right. If there's no discussion. Recommendation is to move this on with amendments. Okay. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 498 with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Okay. Senator Awa. No. Okay. Measure is adopted with the absence of Kiruvo Kaloli, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That is our 3 p.m. So we're going to go into our uh, 3.15 p.m. agenda for the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience in the audience. Um, I know we have a number of measures. On the agenda this afternoon, um, we'd like to ask that everybody make sure the written testimony is submitted. And for those who have, we have your written testimony, so we'd like to ask you 
to um, summarize, if you would, to make sure that we have time to get through all the testifiers and all the bills. Um, and we do have a number of bills. Uh, that said, there's a one minute time limit um, for those who uh, would like to continue to speak. Uh, we'd ask you just to make sure your, your words are concise and uh, hopefully not repetitive, but maybe additive to uh, something that someone else already brought up. So that said, uh, up first is SB 1504, uh, relating to a modern Hawaii history museum. Uh, which is established as a Museum of Modern Hawaii History, and a task force to take a look at uh, how to move forward with that. Testifying first is the Department of Accounting and General Services. On behalf of State Comptroller Keith Regan, I am Dr. Adam Jansen, State Archivist. DAG stands on its testimony in support of this, and as State Archivist, I'm super excited about sharing history with the people. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. Uh, Karen Ewald, State Foundation Culture and Arts Interim Executive Director. We stand um, on our testimony and support. Thank you. Next is the Judiciary. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. I'm Matt Batiste, uh, Executive Director of the Judiciary Center. I'll stand on the testimony of this committee. Thank you. Up next is uh, Department of Budget and Finance. With comments and Bishop Museum. With comments. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify on this measure this afternoon? If not, are there any questions? If not, uh, thank you very much. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 1532, relating to culture and arts, which establishes the Hawaii Leadership Awards Program to honor individuals who have made considerable and outstanding contributions to Hawaii and serve as inspirations to others, um, which is all of you people getting involved in the civic process. All right, SB 1532 up first is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Again, hello, we stand on our written testimony in support and are looking forward to enacting this. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have support from one individual and that is all the written testimony we have. Is there anyone else who wishing to testify in this measure this afternoon? All right, if not, thank you everybody. Let's move on to the next measure, SB 1120, <clears throat> relating to the Works of Art Special Fund, which requires the State Art Museum to provide opportunities for the counties and private organizations to display art through loan arrangements with the State Foundation. Testifying first is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Hello again, we stand um, on our written testimony with comments. We just wanna make sure that uh, the works of art will be in public spaces, even if it's not state. Thank you. Uh, and that's all the testimony we have on 1120. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? If not, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, SB 1119, uh, relating to uh, the Works of Art Special Fund, which specifies that 0.5% rather than 1% of the state fund appropriations for capital improvements shall be transferred to the Works of Art Special Fund. And testifying first is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Um, we stand on our written testimony in opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Hawaii Handweavers Hui. Here with us before in opposition, um, Na Mea Hawaii. In opposition, um, we have a number of organizations in opposition. Um, none who are signed up to testify in person. Is uh, the next person signed up is Sean Brown. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, committee chair, vice chair, and committee members. My name is Sean Brown. I'm an artist and educator. I stand on my testimony in opposition to the bill. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next is uh, Johnny Macas. Apologize if I just butchered your name. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, my name is Johnny Makas, and I'm a tax bank citizen in Honolulu County, Oahu. I'm an artist, arts educator, art historian, and interpretive guide at a local publicly funded museum. Uh, I'm contracted by the Hawaii State Art Museum, and uh, I think it's important to make clear that Hawaii State Art Museum does extremely good things day in, day out. A bill like this that's gonna cut funding from 1% to 0.5% is incredibly egregious as like an arts educator as well. It also cuts things like the student arts exhibitions and funds like that for exhibitions and programs of that nature that provide no charge art activities and art 
exhibitions for children all amongst the state. I think it's very important to remember also that uh, from the beginning of the State Foundation for Culture and the Arts in the 1960s up until 2019, only 11% of that funding went to Native Hawaiian artists. And just in the past few years, 70%, over 70% of that funding is now dedicated to Native Hawaiian art and artists. And so it's important, in my opinion, to keep that kind of funding going, if anything, to increase it, not to cut it. Thank you for your time. I stand on my written testimony. Have a good day. Thank you. Next is uh, Carrie Pellison. Pellison. Not President Ozu, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Paul Janes Brown, good afternoon. I stand on my written testimony, but I'd like to emphasize a couple of things about it. Um, if this measure were to pass, it would have a disastrous impact on the state's ability to purchase works of art. Our state pro our program was the first state in the United States to have a percent for art program. That was a put forth by Masoru Pundi Yokouchi, the first chair of the State Foundation on Cultural and the Arts, who is a son of Maui. He spearheaded the legislative effort for the adoption of our first in the country percent for our program in 1967. And I think this measure would make him spin his, in his grave. It shocks me that the introducers of this measure who both purport to represent Maui would dishonor one of Maui's most beloved, generous and well-known sons by attacking the program that he birthed. Please do not allow this bill to go any further. Thank you. Next is uh, Maki Moranoi. Not present on Zoom chair. Thank you. Jermaine Salim Hagihara. Not present on Zoom chair. Uh, and Setsuko Morinoi. And not present on Zoom chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do have another um, probably, I don't know, 75 or so individuals in opposition to this measure. Um, that's all the written testimony we have. Is there anyone else in the room wishing to testify in this measure? All right. If, oh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Aloha. Aloha. I a scholar and an artist, and I stand in opposition for what has been uh, stated earlier. And I feel as a sculptor, I'm more visual than verbal, but I like to stand by what has been shared. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in opposition. Anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Please come forward. All right, if not, are there any questions? Um, all right, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 822, relating to creative districts, <coughs> excuse me, which creates a process for the establishment of a creative district and uh, provides for tax credits for those districts. Testifying first is, uh, is Creative Industries out of DBED. Chair. Uh Chair, um, stand our testimony, and uh, with me is George Skinner with CID answering questions. Thank you. Comments. Uh, up next is Department of Taxation. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Kathleen. I'm representing the Department of Taxation. The Department stands on its written testimony with comments. I don't think there's any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, up next is the is uh, OIP with comments. Um, State Foundation for Culture and the Arts. On culture and the arts. Uh, I'm Karen, State Foundation of Culture and the Arts. Uh, stand on my written testimony and support. Thank you. Next is Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. This is Jay McMillan on behalf of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We will stand on our written comments submitted on this measure. Thank you. Thank you. And we have uh, comments from one individual. Uh, is there anyone else here in the room with us wishing to testify in this measure or on Zoom? If not, are there any questions? All right, if not, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 1224, which amends required coverage for shared cars that make available, made that are made available through a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing program uh, and repeals uh, a number of exclusions, record keeping and other things. And testifying first is DCCA, Insurance Division. Good afternoon, Chair Lee, Vice Chair, you know, Gordon, you know, the Insurance Commissioner testifying on behalf of DCCA. Thank you. Up next is uh, DCCA Office of Consumer <coughs> Protection. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. Um, the Office of Consumer Protection, uh, Mona Moriarty, Executive Director. Um, we oppose this bill. Uh, I just want to highlight 
one portion of this bill in particular, uh, and that is the how the bill eliminates. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm tracking the wrong one. Uh, page eight, lines eight through fifteen of the bill. Um, it appears that this bill would eliminate coverage, uh, the coverage responsibility for the platform in instances where no other coverage is provided. Uh, that would be a fairly egregious oversight uh, in our view. Um, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next is Hawaii Insurance Council. We stand, Mr. Chair, in opposition. Thank you. Uh, Turo Inc. Thank you, Chair. We'll stand in support. Thank you. Up next is Hawaii Association for Justice. Chair, we also stand in opposition. Thank you. And State Farm. Make sure we'll stand in opposition. Thank you. That's all the uh, written testimony we have on SB 1224. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? Uh, just real quick for Turo then. Sure. Um, appreciate your uh, testimony. Uh, this is a, a similar issue that we uh, have visited in prior years. Last year, there was an agreement which Turo had suggested a $750,000 level of coverage um, and agreed to a number of other provisions in the measure. And this year, you're returning to repeal those. Is that right? Um, thank you for the question, uh, Chair Lee. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Davin Oyagi with Turo. I, I just want to clarify the specific uh, provisions that we offered in, in written testimony last year. It, it, we specifically offered $750,000 as it pertained to uh, the, the host uh, or the, the vehicle in this case uh, that is provided. And I actually have that language available. Uh, if, if you'd like me to provide it to the committee, I'm happy to share that accordingly. Um, but that is distinct and different from what is being offered, uh, what, came, what, was, uh, what took effect under Act 56. Um, this measure uh, seeks to, one, address the, the policy concerns as it pertains to peer-to-peer -peer being set at such a, uh, uh, there being such a disparity at being set at that $750,000, which we've consistently uh, raised concerns about as it pertains to both the guest and the host. And it also um, seeks to keep those provisions in effect, uh, as you know, given that the, the act itself is set to expire um, in 2025. Thank you. And then just lastly, um Turo is currently required to pay $750,000 level of insurance by other states, as I understand it. Is that right? Um, what is, I, I think what is, uh, I appreciate that question, Senator. What I would say is this, um, across 40 states, uh, it's actually aligned, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, car sharing is aligned with the state minimums. Um, it is the outlier uh, that there are two states, uh, New York and West Virginia, uh, that are uh, at $750,000 or higher. Um, in the case of West Virginia, there's currently a, a measure that's actually moving through uh, their legislature as well, which seeks to amend it down. Um, because uh, at least from what we've been hearing, the, the finance committee there has recognized that these uh, insurance minimums are uh, set at, at uh, perhaps disproportionately higher than. And what is the rate in California? I. You know, Senator, uh, Chair, sorry, I'd have to look into that and get back to you. I apologize. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate your testimony. Um, all right, further questions on this measure? If not, let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 1225, um, also relating to insurance, which clarifies when the termination of a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing occurs for the purposes of motor vehicle insurance and clarifies application of the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing insurance laws and amends the minimum motor vehicle insurance coverage for shared cars to be consistent with existing uh, minimum coverage for personal vehicles. Testifying first on 1225 is DCCA, the Insurance Division. Thank you. <clears throat> Up next is uh, DCCA Office of Consumer Protection. Good afternoon. Chair, Vice Chair, members, uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Mana Moriarty, Executive Director. Um, two points, I think, worth making here. The Office of Consumer Protection opposes this bill uh, for similar reasons to the last one. In particular, the, the bill eliminates the ways that a, a shared car driver may terminate the car sharing time and narrows the definition of peer-to-peer -peer car sharing to authorized uses. We're very concerned that this would create gaps. And the effect of creating gaps in coverage is essentially to allow 
platforms to market an inferior product to Hawaii consumers. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Hawaii Insurance Council. Mr. Chair, we stand on our testimony in opposition. Thank you. Up next is Turo Inc. again. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Chair Lee, Vice Chair Noy, Senator Elefante, um, Gavin Ayagi Watero. We'll, we'll stand on our testimony in support of SB 1225. I only wanted to just add that, our, again, our focus is on the insurance provisions uh, for the sake of our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hawaii Association for Justice. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Thank you, Sua, on behalf of Hawaii Association for Justice. I just wanted to point out two quick things. Um, we agree that also the, the amended definitions will end up with gaps in coverage, not protecting the consumers. And also, um, with the $750,000 uh, insurance coverage for the drivers or the cars, it, it should mimic, which is currently in the statute, the $750,000 protection for third part, innocent third parties to protect the consumer. So we oppose this bill. We hope that the bill will stay, I mean, the statute will stay the same as it is given that we did just work on this last session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next is get around in support. That's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify this afternoon? If not, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, if not, um, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 15 relating to vessels, which authorizes the Director of Transportation to adopt rules that regulate and limit noise from vessels at harbors, ports, roadsteads, docks, etc. And testifying first is the Department of Transportation. Thank you. Up next is Matson Navigation Company, in opposition, and Hawaii Harbor Users Group. Oh, in opposition. All right, that's all the written testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? If not, are there any questions? If not, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 969 relating to noise pollution, which establishes that noise generated by helicopters in excess of a certain decibel level constitute a public nuisance and establishes uh, fines and a private right of action. Testifying first, uh, we have uh, Congressman Ed Case in support. Department of Health. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Sean Haruno. I'm with the Department of Health Noise Section, and we stand on our written testimony. Okay. With comments. Thank you. Up next is the Attorney General. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, many members. Um, my name is Whit Hargrove. I'm a, a Deputy Attorney General. And I'm here on behalf of the Attorney General's Office. Just wanted to bring attention to the fact that um, uh, this measure is subject to challenge pursuant to the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution. Uh, the likely basis of the challenge would be that it is preempted by a congressional act that makes basically our airspace federal property as a matter of speaking. Um, and then uh, just notably <laughs> um, in the area of preemption, which of course we, you guys deal with frequently in the legislature. This is an area where there is, um, frankly, very little ambiguity and the preemptive effect of the law in this area having been reviewed by the courts, the plain, plain language of the operative uh, federal law is uh, uniquely uh, instructive as to what likely outcomes are. So just wanted to bring that to your attention and I will be available if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Up next is the Department of Transportation. Stands on its testimony. Thank you. Uh, up next is Jack Harter Helicopters. Uh, in opposition, Helicopter Association International in opposition, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association in opposition, Corey Hardin. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Mayer, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Mayer. Having collected actual tourist helicopter flyover data here in Waimanalo, I stand in solid support of SB 969, as stated in my written testimony. In addition, I'd like to offer my property for a few days to allow for professional audio recording of helicopter flyovers 
without letting helicopter companies know this is being done so they won't avoid flyovers on those days. Finally, I'd like to add that unless decibel level is strictly enforced, I suspect at least some helicopter pilots will ignore the decibel limits. Therefore, ultimately, I'd like to see helicopters, except for emergencies, banned from flight over land. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have individual, or excuse me, testimony from one individual with comments. Are there, oh, excuse me, three individual and two, two additional individuals in support. Is there anyone else here with us wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? Senator Elefante. Yeah, I have a question for the representative from the Department of Health. Hi, Hi. good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sean Haruno, Department of Health noise section. How, how would you measure and monitor the, the noise? Because in the bill, it says you would take decibel readings at a ground level site located within X amount of mile radius from the airport. So how, we, how would you do that? We don't. So anything dealing with aircraft and altering aircraft uh, flight paths, it's out of our out of our hands. So we deal with construction, industrial, agricultural, and stationary mechanical noise sources, not aircraft. Okay, but if this bill were to go, you would mm -hmm. have to administer uh, that. Would that we would be have to look into how we would, but it, yeah, we'd have to research that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if there's no further questions, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, <clears throat> Senate Bill 224 relating to noise control, which allows for noise control infractions to be processed under the traffic and emergency period infractions adjudication process and grants the district court concurrent jurisdiction over noise control infractions committed by minors. Testifying first on SB 224 is the judiciary. We have comments, Honolulu Police. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Captain Bert Saria with the Honolulu Police Department assigned to District 6 Waikiki. We're standing a written testimony, testimony to support uh, Senate Bill 224. Thank you. I've been, I'll be available for any questions. Thank you. Up next is the Department of the Prosecuting Attorney, City and County. Thank you. That's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify today? If not, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, if not, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 844, relating to special number plates, which authorizes the issuance of special number plates to commemorate Malama Pu'uloa. And testifying first on 844 is Huyo Ho'ohonua. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice good Chair, afternoon. and committee. My name is Anthony Chance. I'm CEO of Hui Ho'ohonua. And uh, in addition of standing uh, on my testimony in uh, full support of this bill, I would like to submit an amendment on uh, page two, uh, line 10, where it says, uh, Hui o Ho'onua, I mean, uh, Malama Pu'uloa needs to be changed to Hui o Ho'onua as the 501c3. Uh, Malama Pu'uloa is our uh, program uh, to support this. Uh, restoration of uh, Pu'uloa, which is Pearl Harbor. And that's all, sir. Thank you. Up next, we have the Hawaii Bicycling League in support and four individuals in support. That's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is anyone else wishing to testify this afternoon? If not, all right, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 315, <clears throat> relating to motor vehicle registration, which classifies certain former military vehicles as special interest vehicles and enables them to apply for registration. Testifying first on 315 is the Department of Transportation. Stands on its testimony and opposition. Thank you. Up next is the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission. Good afternoon, the PC stands on its written testimony and comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all the written testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify this afternoon? All right, if not, thank you everybody. Let's move, are there any questions? Let's move on to the next measure. Senate Bill 785 relating to sustainable development goals. Um, testifying first is DLNR. Well, DLNR stands on his testimony in support and I'm here for questions. Thank you. Next is the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. 
Good afternoon. Aloha, Chair, Senators. My name is Daniel Basti, Sustainability Coordinator of the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. We offer comments specifically uh, strongly supporting the UN Sustainable Development Goals. However, we make a note that these are now codified by reference in the Hawaii State Planning Act. Due to the fact that Hawaii Revised Statute Section 226-65, which codified the state's Climate and Sustainability Strategic Action Plan, also known as the Hawaii 2050 Sustainability Plan, actually um, included all of those SDGs. So this bill is no longer necessary. Thank you. Thank you. We have um, Patricia Beekman. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, please oppose uh, SB 785, the bill relating to sustainable development goals. It is a copy of the United Nations Agenda 2030, removing the American tradition of state, states' rights in favor of global control, which is a repudiation of the freedoms our country was founded on. Decisions on the environment are best made locally, not by an international organization that couldn't possibly know or care about local th conditions, as well as we the people in Hawaii who live here. We don't have local control over if we if we don't have local control over our environment and control over what goes into our own bloodstreams, we have virtually no control at all and have entered true hell on earth right here in what used to be paradise. Don't do this to us. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Thomas uh, Milser. Milsarek. Milsarek. Apologies. Uh, my, that's okay. My name is Thomas Milsarek. As stated before, I'm 73 years old. I still surf on the North Shore. I surfed in extra large surf at the pipeline contest about 10 days ago on a short surfboard. I don't say that to brag. I say that to say that as a 73-year-old person, I have much knowledge related to this bill in relation to health, vaccines, and agriculture. I was horribly poisoned by pesticides in 1983, almost lost my life, almost was committed to a mental institution. I was horribly injured by a vaccine in 2000, lost my job of 33 years. I am blind in my right eye from that vaccine. My teeth, which used to be big, bright, beautiful surfer teeth, broke up within a couple of days and fell out of my mouth due to this vaccine. My time is probably up, but I'll say also that related to health in this bill, the United States ranks next to or last of all developed nations on the planet when it comes to overall health outcomes. That's a fact. I will say that um, our children, who in 1980s had 11% chronic illnesses, 1986 they passed the Vaccine Act, now they have 55%. Uh, I could ask you to summarize. 55% chronic illnesses. And that's my summary. I have. I am available for... Are you in opposition or supporting? Sorry, I think I written in my written testimony I was in opposition. As, as stated, these issues yes. are very important and need to be addressed. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Uh, up next, we have uh, Michelle Melendez. Good afternoon. Aloha. Thank you so much. I'm um, in absolute opposing of this bill. Uh, the very start of your bill says we must undertake profound transformation in how human societies live on Earth. It is not the role of any governing body to run people's lives in a free country. The role of government is to preserve liberty and freedom. Your goal number four, quality education, eliminate gender disparities. This is indoctrination of our youth in regard to their gender. And this is not the responsibility of government at all. Uh, good health and well-being achieve universal health care coverage. What does that mean? Universal is a, a term for communism. And um, uh, in regards to uh, what are the rules going to be to get this universal health care coverage, please do, please do not put past this. Um, it is not the role of any government body to protect individuals' health. In 1856, the U.S. Supreme Court found that a law enforcement officer has no duty to protect any individual. That, that is the responsibility of each individual. The only duty that they have is to enforce the law. The government cannot run people's lives. There are so many things in this bill. We could ask you to each, summarize. Each one of these things needs to have its own bill. Please, please oppose this bill. Thank you. Um, that's all the, but well, we have additional um, number of uh, individuals uh, in opposition uh, in written testimony, but that's everyone who signed up to testify. Is there anyone else here in the room with us wishing to testify in this measure? If not, all right, are there any questions? 
Uh, and just one for um, uh, OP. Thank you. In your testimony, you said that um, this has already been codified into law. 226, is that right? Yes, the Hawaii State Planning Act codified the State Climate and Sustainability Strategic Action Plan in 22665. We since published that plan in December, or excuse me, June of 2021, which actually utilized the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as a, as a framework for that plan. Okay. So by default, it's in aligned already. Thank you. Okay. All right, any further questions? If not, um, thank you. Let's move on to the last measure. Um, SB 1037, and I'll just note we do have to be out of here in about 10 minutes, so uh, we'd ask folks to be very concise because we still have to come back and vote. Um, so up first on 1037 is DLNR. In, oh, in support, uh, Malama Pupukea Waimea. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee. Uh, in the effort of time, I'm going to go ahead and pass my time on to the next testifier, but we are in full enthusiastic support of this bill. Mahalo. Thank you. Up next is Kua Aina Ulu uh, Awamo. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair. It's Kevin Chang for Kua Aina Ulu Awamo. Um, just want to thank everyone for moving this bill forward and hoping that you'll send it out of your committee. Other than that, we stand on our testimony. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Mahalo. Uh, up next is Malama Limu Club, Kamehameha Schools, Kapalama, in support. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Aloha, my name is Madison Morata, and I represent the Kamehameha Schools Malama Limu Club. Our club strives to educate fellow high schoolers on the importance of Limu through community service events, where we remove invasive Limu from various fish ponds and beaches, giving endemic and native Hawaiian Limu the opportunity to thrive and maintain diversity in our ocean ecosystems. I'm here on behalf of my 70 club members to offer strong support for SB 1037 to name Limu Kala as our state Limu. We strongly support this bill because we believe that Limu Kala deserves to be recognized for its immense importance, both environmentally and culturally, and that this bill will bring awareness to the great need for conserving our native Hawaiian ecosystems. Thank you. Mahalo. Up next is Ocean Era Inc. Not President Zoom Chair. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> Kahako Ohana Association. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. In support. Then we have additional uh, testimony from about a dozen individuals all in support. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? If not, all right, we're going to recess for decision making. Recess. All right, good afternoon. We're reconvening the Committee on Transportation and Culture and Arts uh, for decision making on our 3.15 p.m. agenda, beginning with Senate Bill 1504 relating to a modern Hawaii History Museum. We'd like to move this measure forward with some amendments, adopting the um, uh, consideration of the judiciary, adding the Judiciary History Center to the task force. Secondly, amending the description in the preamble uh, pursuant to the comments from Bishop Museum. Uh, we'd like to clarify the museum has a primary focus on territorial and statehood eras, modern day issues, and will partner with and serve as a complement to other institutions. Uh, we'd also like to make sure the task force should look um, into what uh, future partnerships could look like. Uh, for example, combining uh, and overlapping missions with the State Archives or the Judiciary History Center um, and have that conversation. Finally, we'd like to remove the special fund, blank out the appropriation, and uh, put that in the committee report. Any, any discussion on this? If not, Vice Chair. Okay, Chair's recommendation to pass SB 1504 with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? No vote. Okay, measures adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to SB 1532 relating to culture and arts. We'd like to pass this with amendments as well, clarifying <clears throat> uh, that the governor and lieutenant governor shall present awards uh, together with the selection committee uh, uh, together. Uh, secondly, um, no one specifying that no one may receive more than one award in each category or more than one award each year. Finally, uh, blank out the appropriation and adding that to the committee report. Any discussion on this? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 1532 
to pass with amendments with four members present and one excuse. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay, measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to Senate Bill 1120 relating to the Works of Art Special Fund. Um, we'd like to pass this with amendments, um, noting from the State Foundation Culture and Arts, uh, clarifying um, that the art loans to um, non-museums or public institutions may be made um, subject to a fee to be determined by SFCA, then adding in a defective date uh, for further consideration. Any discussion? If not. Okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 1120 to pass with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Major is adopted and one excuse. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to Senate Bill 1119 relating to the Works of Art Special Fund. Um, just noting uh, some of the overwhelming testimony in opposition. Uh, I'd like to defer this measure and we can continue the conversation in another manner. Uh, moving on to SB 822 relating to creative districts. Um, we'd like to move this measure forward, passing it with amendments, uh, adopting the recommendations of the Department of Taxation, amending Section 9D, D, clarifying that taxpayers shall distinguish income from inside and outside of creative districts. Also from OIP, clarifying only uh, single notice under the Sunshine Law uh, is should be required under this bill, deleting um, Sections 9-CB on page 6, lines 6 through 9, and adding in, um, oh, and that's it. Any discussion on 822? If not, Vice Chair. Okay, Chair's recommendation to pass SB 822 with amendments with four members present. Uh, any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Measures adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, moving on to SB 1224 relating to insurance. Um, again, noting some of the uh, opposition here, we'd like to defer this and continue uh, the discussion. There's a, a House vehicle. Um, that is still moving, and the Senate, or this committee previously moved out a, another vehicle, which is in the Consumer Protection Committee currently, uh, which would address the same issue. Uh, similarly, um, moving on to SB 1225 related to insurance, we'd also um, defer this, noting that there's a similar uh, measure addressing the same issues which this committee had just passed out to the Consumer Protection Committee. Uh, moving on to Senate Bill 15 relating to vessels, um, we'd like to Pass this with amendments, just adding in a defective date. Any discussion? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. With four members present, any voting with reservations? Any no votes? No vote. Okay. Measures adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Senate Bill 969 relating to noise pollution. Um, similarly, we'd like to pass this um, with amendments. Uh, we note uh, some of the issues raised by um, the Attorney General and other stakeholders. Um, we'll also note some jurisdictions throughout the United States we've um, discovered um, have similar um, ability to partner with um, their various jurisdictions to regulate um, noise at, at a certain threshold. And we'd like to figure out how that's being done considering some of the legal um, uh, barriers that uh, seem to be present here in Hawaii. So we'd like to add on a defective date to this measure, let it go on to the Judiciary Committee and see if we have time to figure out uh, exactly what those legal uh, implications are and what those jurisdictions are doing uh, in those areas. To pass with amendments. So recognition pass with amendments and just continue the discussion. Okay. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 969 with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to SB 224 relating to noise control. Uh, we'd like to move this on as well um, to the Judiciary Committee, uh, passing with amendments, simply adding on an effective date to ensure further discussion. And we'd like a chance to chat with a couple of the stakeholders about um, uh, some of the issues which we were unable to, I think, get clarity on today. So recommendation is defective date. Any discussion? If not. Okay. Um, what about the prosecutors? Uh, We'll get up to. Oh, you know, said, yeah, we'll note that in, we'll note the, uh, we'll note in the committee report. This is 224. Okay. Right? right. Yeah. Okay. We'll note in the committee report. We'll ask uh, Judiciary Committee to take a look at their testimony. Oh, okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 224 to pass with amendments with four members present. Any voting with uh, reservations? Any no votes? No vote. Okay. Measures that adopted, <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to SB 844 relating to special number plates. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adding in a defective date. Any discussion? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. 
Chair's recommendation on SB 844 to pass with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay, measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to SB 315 related to motor vehicle registration. Uh, recommendation similarly, uh, we'd like to check with one of the stakeholders on something here. So we'd like to move this on, um, uh, adding in a defective date. Any discussion on this? It's Chair's not. recommendation on SB 315 is to pass with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to SB 785 relating to sustainable development goals. Uh, just given this has been uh, somewhat addressed um, uh, already and is part of our state's planning, I would like to defer this measure. Okay. Thank you. And then moving on to the last bill on the agenda. SB 1037 relating to Limu Kala. I'd like to pass this on with amendments, just adding in a defective date. Okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 1037 to pass with amendments with four members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We're adjourned.